Hello. So I'm Peter, this is Matt, and we're gonna talk about using dynamic tables to build your data pipelines on Iceberg. We'll start with a quick introduction to dynamic tables, then we'll take a look at how dynamic tables interact with Iceberg. And finally, Matt is gonna show us a demo. So what are dynamic tables? Dynamic tables are declarative data pipelines, and they continuously and automatically materialize the results of a query. Typically, your data engineering setup would ingest data through Snowpipe, uh, which is our batch-oriented ingestion mechanism, or Snowpipe streaming, which is our row-oriented ingestion mechanism. This data is then taken from the landing tables by dynamic tables, and the data is transformed to a layout suitable for your native apps, for your AI applications, for your BI tools, and any other serving layers. But data pipelines can come with some challenges. They can be complex. It's not trivial to manage dependencies, to manage orchestration and scheduling. And it's also because you also need to account for multiple points of failure. Furthermore, maintaining and improving handcrafted pipelines can be inefficient. Optimizations are manual, they're complex and very often targeted to the problems or to the areas that you really want to improve in your pipeline. And lastly, managing pipelines can be difficult because brittle pipelines are unable to react to changes upstream. Fixing such problems often involves you to collaborate with multiple vendors. On the other hand, dynamic tables abstract away these complexities. You use SQL to declare the desired outcome of your pipeline, and you don't need to worry about the steps to achieve these transformations, nor do you need to worry about uh, orchestration or scheduling. These are all taken care of by dynamic tables. Dynamic tables are also cost-effective because they support incremental processing and provide uh, refresh mode re recommendations based on automatic query analysis. Furthermore, performance improvements are transparent, and dynamic tables are, in general, low overhead. And lastly, they are cloud-native, so you get all the benefits from some strong security, governance, and scalability. Let's take a look at the key features of dynamic tables. They're declarative data pipelines, so they are easily expressible. Scheduling and orchestration are taken care of for you. Dynamic tables also support low latency data freshness controlled by the target lag. Today we support data freshness as low as one minute, and soon we're gonna support data freshness as low as 15 seconds. If you're interested in early preview, come and talk to us after the session. You can express transformations using SQL syntax, and you can control your pipelines through Python and REST APIs. Furthermore, dynamic tables provide automatic query analysis and through that, refresh mode recommendations. Uh, we have a detailed performance guide that you can consult if you like to really get into the weeds. Dynamic tables also provide pipeline controls. So whenever you don't use your pipeline, you can easily suspend them. And you can trigger uh, on-demand refreshes for a single dynamic table or for the whole DAG. Dynamic tables also excel at observability. You can visualize your DAG, you can look at the status of your pipelines, and you can, if you want, you can look at the historical refreshes of your pipeline. So how do dynamic tables work with Iceberg? Well, Snowflake supports dynamic Iceberg tables, which means that the materialized query results are now in Iceberg format. Furthermore, dynamic tables can read from Snowflake managed Iceberg tables and soon from Iceberg tables managed by external catalogs. You can build hybrid pipelines thus, reading from regular tables, from Iceberg tables, from views, from dynamic tables or dynamic Iceberg tables. So dynamic Iceberg tables bring the best of both worlds. They are dynamic tables, so they take care of the orchestration and the complexities behind incrementalizations. But they also materialize the results in Apache Iceberg, which means 
uh, all this is available in your data lake if you expose it through the open catalog. So why did we choose Apache Iceberg? Because our vision for your data lake is built on the interoperable and vendor neutral format Iceberg. Having the Iceberg tables registered to open catalog provides a unified and cross-engine governance. This enables a full spectrum of workloads with the flexibility to mix and match tools uh, of your liking. So where do dynamic tables fit in to your pipelines? You can build Iceberg only or mix declarative data pipelines. The results um, of your transformations are seamlessly uh, materialized in the Iceberg format. So your data lake can easily access the transformed data. Here's an example for how to build your lake house on Iceberg and Open Catalog, which opens the door for interoperability between Snowflake and other tools. This architecture provides the unique benefit that with Open Catalog, you get access controls across Snowflake and any other tool you choose to integrate with. In terms of transformations, Snowflake provides a batch and row-oriented ingestion mechanism. And in terms of uh, data transformations, we provide uh, both declarative uh, transformations through dynamic tables, or uh, if you prefer imperative approaches, we have streams and tasks to implement those. All of these solutions work well with Iceberg. Before moving on to the demo, I want to spend a few words about uh, the future, specifically about Rollineage and the Iceberg V3 spec. Rollineage was proposed by Snowflake to the V3 standard to allow efficient and engine agnostic CDC on Iceberg. It received an overwhelming support from the community. Rollineage tracks a row's identity across snapshots and with additional metadata that is also part of the raw lineage, we can easily distinguish between copy on write and updated rows. This makes it cheap to uh, compute, this, uh, compute the stream and uh, to compute incrementalizations for dynamic tables. At the end, this means that the same computational overhead now applies to uh, the computing incrementalizations, regardless whether your base tables are native Snowflake tables or whether they are Iceberg tables. Furthermore, it permits alignment between streams and dynamic tables, regardless of the base table type. I'm going to hand it over to Matt for the demo. OK. OK, demo time. For this demo, we're going to be creating a simple end-to-end -end analytics pipeline with a focus on analyzing customer service call logs. We'll use this pipeline to do things like improve staffing, um, manage our operational costs, and just better understand how customers are moving through the system. In this scenario, we're going to have a third party which owns the call system logs. They're going to publish this data to an Apache Iceberg table using the Glue catalog. And instead of ingesting this or duplicating this data in Snowflake, we're going to create an unmanaged iceberg table, which points to this iceberg data, and then build dynamic tables on top of this unmanaged iceberg table, which allows us to incrementally process call records as they arrive. Later, we'll use dynamic iceberg tables to create some aggregated data sets that we then publish to Polaris uh, and Open Catalog. And then we'll show how a downstream consumer can query this data using tools like Spark outside of the Snowflake worksheet and ecosystem. So to begin, let's go to our AWS console here. We're going to use Athena to create an iceberg table, which mimics what this you know, third party would be doing. I'm going to create this phone records table. Every record in this table will have things like a call ID, a call stage, a phone number, um, a US state, and a timestamp for when this event occurred. And let's go ahead and let's add two calls into this table. Call ID 1 and call ID 2. All right, let's go back into Snowflake. Um, the first thing we need to do is create our unmanaged iceberg table. I'm going to start off by creating a catalog integration for the Glue catalog and an external volume, which points to where these iceberg files are stored. I've already set up all of the IAM permissions and the roles required to do this. So there's our catalog integration. Here's our external volume. And now we can create our unmanaged iceberg table within Snowflake. 
if I query this table, I should see the two calls that we answered, uh, which we do. You can see call ID one here and call ID two. So now we can move on to actually building some of our pipeline. We're going to start by building just a snowflake table that maps each phase in our call system to some cost. It could be US dollars, it could be credits, it doesn't really matter. We're going to imagine that there are several states the customer can move through. They can start off at the menu, they can connect to a representative, leave a voicemail, review some information about their account before finally ending their call. And now we're going to create our first dynamic table. And this dynamic table we're going to use um, for more dynamic tables later. And this is going to structure the data in a way that's a little more easy to analyze. Uh, this is going to be an incremental data or incremental dynamic table. Uh, it's going to contain the call ID, the call stage, the phone number, the state that it's call originated from. It's going to use the timestamp of the event as the start state of this phase. And then we're going to use a window function to calculate the state end time, where the state end time is the start time of the subsequent phase or the next phase. In this pipeline, we're going to be using it for daily monitoring and metrics. So if there are any phone records which come in very delayed, further than a day, uh, we're just going to ignore it and we're going to filter it out with our where clause. So we can go ahead, we can create our dynamic table. And if we select from our dynamic table, uh, we can see that we have call ID 1, we can see how the customer progressed through the system, we've calculated the start times and the end times of each phase, uh, with the exception of the end call state, which is a terminal state, and we're just going to leave that null for now. Okay, so we said this is going to process the data incrementally. Let's go ahead and prove it. Let's go back to uh, Athena and add another call, call ID 3. And then we'll go back to our Snowflake environment. We need to refresh the unmanaged table to sync with the latest metadata. Uh, in this case, the snapshot that now includes call with the ID 3. We can see that if I query this, we now have call ID 3 in our table. And if I refresh our dynamic table, we see that call ID 3 is also in here. And I accidentally skipped over, but if the, the refresh stats show that there were four inserted rows. Uh, and no deletes, no copies, and this is what we expect. Those are the three, the four rows associated with call ID 3. Okay, so the data that we're dealing with contains some personally identifiable information. In this case, phone records. Our analysts shouldn't be able to see this data unmasked. Uh, we need to stay compliant with our company's privacy policies. To address this, we're going to create a masking policy that uh, masks all the phone numbers for everybody except our special privileged admin role. And then we're going to attach this masking policy to the unmanaged table. The nice thing about attaching this to the base table is that the mask data is going to be inherited by all the downstream dynamic tables. So we don't need to worry about continuously masking data or figuring out which data can be plain text and which needs to be masked. So let's go ahead and create a masking, masking policy. And we attach this to the phone number column of our base table. Now if I query this table, we can see that all the phone numbers are actually masked. We can go ahead and refresh our dynamic table. Um, and here we see that there are actually 12 inserted rows and 12 deleted rows. And this is because a tasking a matching policy to the base table uh, resulted in a reinitialization of the dynamic table. All the phone numbers in this table needed to be masked, uh, including the rows which have already been processed. We can also see this reinitialization if we query the dynamic table refresh history. So here are the history of refreshes that we've done. Uh, we have the first refresh happened at creation. We have the second refresh, which happened uh, when we did the incremental refresh for call ID 3. And then we can see that the latest refresh was a reinitialized refresh as a result of the base table. OK, so now we're going to go ahead and use dynamic iceberg tables to generate some aggregated data sets, publish these to the Polaris catalog and open catalog. Here is open catalog. I've gone ahead and I've created a demo catalog right here, which has our demo database, but no tables in it yet. First thing I need to do, I need to create another catalog integration. Uh, this time it's a catalog integration to the Polaris catalog. This will allow our tables to sync data to Polaris. And then I need to create an external volume where our dynamic iceberg tables will write their data. And then I'm going to go ahead and create our first dynamic iceberg table. So this is going to be another incremental table. I give it the external volume. I give it the catalog integration. And this will have the um, cost per stage per call. So we'll have the call ID, we'll have the call stage, we'll have the state the call originated from. Uh, we're going to calculate the duration as the interval of the phases from our previous DT. 
And then we're going to join that snowflake table that we created earlier, which maps each call phase to the cost. So I can go ahead, create this dynamic iceberg table. I can query this, and we can see that for each call, we can see the stage, the state, the duration that the customer spent here, and as well as the stage cost. I can also go back to the catalog now, and if I refresh, we can see that this table has been synced to Open Catalog, and we can see the table schema. Let's go back to Snowflake. Let's create one more dynamic iceberg table at a little higher granularity. This is just going to be the cost per stage by state. We're going to use the same catalog integration, the same external volume. This is going to contain the stage, the state, and then we're just going to sum the, the cost for each stage across all of our calls. We're going to ignore the end call column, as it's not very interesting. So we create that. Again, we can see that we have the results that we expect. And if we go back to Open Catalog and we refresh, we see both tables have now been synced. OK, so I have a Spark shell. Now let's query this data that we just published with the dynamic iceberg tables using um, Spark. So first query, I can see that both tables exist in the namespace. And I can go ahead, and I can just query these tables directly from Spark. And these contain the same results that we see inside Snowflake. All right, we can do this for both tables. OK. So just as a last example, um, let's watch this whole pipeline run from start to finish. Let's go back to our AWS console. Add two more calls, call ID four and five. Okay. Go back to Snowflake. Uh, we are going to refresh the unmanaged iceberg table again just to sync to the latest snapshot that contains call four and five. We can see that these do exist and that the phone numbers are still masked. And now I'm going to refresh the most downstream dynamic table. This is the cost per stage by state. This is going to trigger refreshes for all the other dynamic tables in the pipeline. OK, there we go. And we can finally go back to Spark. And in this case, we can see that the data has been published. So if we just add a where call ID equals four or call ID equals five. Oop, I think I may. Ah, it's the wrong table, excuse me, per call. D four or call ID. Okay, there we go. Query the wrong table. But now we can see that the data has flown through the entire pipeline, published to Polaris, and we can query this downstream with uh, external tools like Spark. That's it for the demo.